Hello everybody, this is Adnan from Black Button Geeks. Welcome to this special video. Today I'll be building a whole PC. The first step is listing the parts. Let's go through what we have here. The motherboard is ASUS Rampage 5 Extreme, Republic of Gamer Edition. This is an ROG motherboard based on X99 chipset from Intel. Of course, because it is X99, it goes with, an X with the Haswell E processor. We have here the 5930K, 6 core, 12 threads, 40 PCI lane processor. Regarding storage, I'm going for a full 1TB SSD from Samsung 850 Pro Series. The power supply is an AX1500i from Corsair. This is a fully modular power supply. Continuing with Corsair, I'm also choosing the cooler from Corsair. This is the H110 cooler. It has a 280mm radiator and two 140mm fans. RAM or memory is also from Corsair. This is the 2800MHz RAM uh, DDR4. I have uh, two 16 GB kits here, which is a 32 uh, GB in total, which is really handy and beautiful. And of course, the biggest piece from Corsair is the case. This is the Graphite 780T, which comes with the uh, built-in fans. In addition, I got some silent fans with red rings to complement my looks and feel. Regarding the graphics cards, I'm choosing three GTX 980 cards. You can see these are from MSI, but this is the reference design, so it doesn't have the MSI Twin Frozer cooler. And I'm choosing also a claw shaped or a claw uh, logo uh, three-way SLI bridge from NVIDIA. These are for sale recently actually. They used to be only coming with uh, ready-made systems in the past. Wish me luck, we'll start the build now. Now first, you start with a core. And the core of every computer is the central processing unit, the CPU. First, I remove these straps. These are some protective straps with the ASUS name on it. Very carefully. Okay. Of course, don't forget to ground yourself first. Now, X99 comes with two latches, one on each side, because probably because of the size. The other uh, chipsets come with single latch because they are smaller in size. Uh, I'll start with this one. See, you can see an empty space here, which means this is more free to open. So you can open this latch first, then you open the other one, and then take both of them up, and take this cover, protective cover up. Now all the pins are exposed. In Intel processors, pins are in the motherboard. Unlike AMD where the pins are on the CPU itself. CPUs in Intel uh, platforms have only contact surfaces that will touch these pins. This is socket 2011 version 3, so naturally it has 2011 pins. This is my CPU. As you can see, there is a golden arrow here. This golden arrow should match with a black arrow on my CPU socket on the motherboard. Now, installing the CPU, this goes only one way. If you do it any other way, it will be wrong, it will be a mistake, and you might break a pin or cause a problem. Give it a little wiggle to make sure it is steady in its place. It is actually. Now, put the cover down, close the cover like this, put this latch down, You'll feel there is a little force involved here. And your CPU is intact in place and your protective cover is removed. After the CPU has been installed successfully, let me move to the memory. Now this motherboard has quad channel memory. If you are installing one kit, which will be four DIMMs, you will fill the red ones, the red uh, DIMM slots. But I'm using eight DIMM slots, so I'll fill all of them. So my order doesn't matter. I'll just go with whatever order I like. I'll start by opening these latches and in X99 the latch opens only in one side, this side doesn't open. Probably that's why it's extremely close to the graphics card slot here because it doesn't matter. And let me install all of them. I'll start from this side first so that I can see what I'm doing. Now, I finished the first half, now I'll move to the second half. Things are other way around here. What, uh, in this half you used to see it this way, in the other half you'll see it this way. Okay? And you know that you installed it correctly only when you hear the sound like this. So make sure you hear this. Now I have my CPU and my memory fully installed. Let me move to the next system. Ideally, I should start now installing the motherboard here, in the case. But before that, I want to make my life easier. 
My plan is to have fans in push-pull configuration and the radiator on top and to have fans with red ring, special quiet fans from Corsair by replacing the exhaust fan and adding two more fans on the top also. Also, I want to remove these drive cages. Let me do all this homework and come back to you. So, I have installed my fans. I replaced the exhaust fan with this beautiful ring fan with this red color. And I put the radiator here and I installed two pairs of fan. One on top of it, you cannot see it, and one on the bottom which with a ring so that this will be in the, shown in the transparent window. And it is an exhaust in both sides. I'll have intake from front and I'll have exhaust from this side. Now, I have chosen to have the tubes from this side instead of this side in order to have some clearance for my optical drive. I'm still one of the old guys who use optical drive. Many of you don't nowadays, but I wanted a space for my optical drive and this way I achieved it. Now, this will go directly to the CPU block once I install my motherboard. Stay tuned. So, motherboard is in place now. Two things to notice. First, never forget your IO shield. I forgot my IO shield, I had to do it all over again. You have to remove the whole motherboard and put the IO shield and then put the motherboard back in case you forget. So first, they always put the IO shield before putting the motherboard. Second thing, use the right screws. I used wrong screws, so I had to flip the case to, hold, uh, to have all the screws fall down and then put the correct screws after that. So make sure which screw is the correct one and tight it in every single possible place in the motherboard. Now motherboard is intact. Next step will be installing the CPU cooler. I'll come to that. So the next step is to install the CPU cooler. In all CLC or closed loop coolers, you will have this protection layer. Yes, in many of them actually, not all of them, you will have a pre-applied thermal paste. Never touch this area. This area should be touched only by your CPU because this area is a thermal paste and this thermal paste will transfer the heat between your CPU and your cooler. If you touch it by accident, you'll reduce that transfer rate, you, which will cause the CPU to heat up. Installation is easy. First, you take the included ring, or actually the bracket, to convert it into square shape, because it has to fit as a square here. Then, you put this ring in, and you have to, it has to click in place. Okay, so the ring is now installed. It clicked in place, it's very steady. And now the next step is to put it on top of the CPU and put the thumb screws. There will be four thumb screws supplied along with it. You have to put them in alternate directions to make sure they stick properly and put the correct pressure. This is a blessed to have these tubes really flexible so they can your, orient your cooler in the, whichever direction you like. Now keep in mind the logo has to look good also. So I oriented the ring so that the Corsair world is properly oriented. So all the screws are in place by thumb. Now I'll have to tighten it by screwdriver. I'll come back to you. So guys, it is in place. Next step is to connect this little cable to the CPU fan connector. I have it in this motherboard, it's actually a little far away, it's here. But in many motherboards, it is next to the CPU. Now, notice one thing, that this connector is a 3-pin connector, while my connector is 4-pin. So all, again, there is also one way to insert this. So make sure you follow the, right, the correct direction. Now, all these fans require cabling. I've installed five, seven fans in this case, and I never cabled any one of them. So I'll connect five of my fans, which are the exhaust fans, to the internal controller, the case controller. The case has a fan controller that can support up to five fans. I'll connect to that one. And then I have uh, two fans for intake in the front, which will be connected directly to the motherboard. Let me do my cabling for the fans and come back to you. In addition, also, I'll connect some connections for my uh, drive base, the ROG uh, panel and the optical drive. Now, do you see any cables? You see few cables here. You see few cables maybe on top. Every cabling is almost done except the power cabling, but it's all in the back. This is called cable management. You have the SATA cables. Two of them are connected here. One is going to my SSD, this guy, and one is going to my optical drive. And I kept a gap between them because six SATA ports here are possible to be raided. If I need a raid in future, 
I can connect all these six together and they have to be hard disks or SSDs, not optical drives. These two are orphans, I can connect uh, an uh, optical drive to them. And these are SATA Express, I don't need them now. I can use them as normal SATA, but I don't need that. So let it be SATA Express and in case I need it in future. Of course, I didn't connect any power cable. I connected my USB 3, my USB 2, my uh, front I.O. panels, my, all my fans to the built-in fan controller. Cabling is in the back. You don't see it from uh, this side. And I've connected also my HD audio here. Now, let me connect all my power cables. My power supply will be the AX1500i, as, as I stated in the beginning of this video. And it is modular. So I will connect several cables, but I will connect only the ones that I need. I will connect cables to provide SATA power for my ROG Connect and my optical drive. They will be sharing one cable because uh, SATA has the possibility to have two connectors, SATA cable. I will have a separate SATA cable going to my uh, hard disk, or sorry, SSD. And I will prepare some SATA cables to go for my graphics cards. I will be having three graphics cards. Of course, the most important one will be the motherboard power connectors. So, suited and booted. The cabling is done but it wasn't an easy journey. Corsair, I expected much better and much easier cable management for the big cables, but it was really a pain. Cabling the power supply cables was not an easy journey at all. I had a lot of incidents, uh, especially in the backside where you are supposed to cable manage your cables. It's a mess. I don't want to show you that. I just show you the pretty picture here in the front. Now, only thing left is to install my graphics cards. As you might know, X99 chipset doesn't come with built-in graphics. You have to have a graphics card. In my case, I'll be installing three graphics cards in three-way SLI. You can see the my SSD is here. It's connected. All my, my optical drive and my ROG uh, panel is also connected. ROG panel is not visible really because it's really a, a tiny piece up there, but it is connected. I can assure you that. The AX1500 is not visible. Which I don't like really this little notch here because it is hiding the power supply. I wish to see it, but in a way it's good because it hides all your cabling mess. Now this is the graphics card I'll be using, the GTX 980. It has two six pin power connector, which is really unlikely for a high end card. Normally they use eight pin, but this is because the Nvidia implemented really nice power delivery system into this one and power efficiency. It has two, th uh, it has three display ports. Uh, connections and one HDMI 2 connection and one dual link DVI. Why three display port? Because 4K and G-Sync are supported only on uh, display port and uh, sorry G-Sync is supported only on display port and this is uh, this card is supposed to give you enough power to drive three G-Sync monitors. Uh, HDMI 2 which means it can run 4K properly not like HDMI 1. Now I have to remove this metal piece here because this metal piece is supposed to be removed when you have cards cramped next to each other in SLI. And I will be having that because this is a three-way SLI setup. Now we come to the last point or last step of our build. It's the graphics cards. Let me install the first one. Of course it goes in the first slot. And you hear a click once you install it properly. Now second one is supposed to go with a gap and then comes the third one. Because, because I'm installing three it doesn't really make a difference. So I'll just install it next to it. Okay, and then goes the third one. Now I'll connect the SLI bridge to have all the three cards talking to each other. And of course, I'll have to screw all the cards back to place. Stay tuned. Graphics is on. This was the last step in our build. SLI bridge is also on. This is the nice NVIDIA SLI bridge. All the power connectors are in. Next step is testing. Wow, that was a hectic job. It looked easy. I thought it was much easier than this, but it wasn't easy. Probably because this is a very big build with a big case, with so many components, with even so many graphics cards. Now, moment of truth. Let me power it on. There it is, up and running in full glory. Look at the monitor now. Now I took the liberty and then installed Windows 8.1 here. By default when you start a new PC, you will not have an operating system and you have to go through this uh, exercise. I did install it and you can see how fast is the booting time. Of course this fast booting is because of the SSD. There we are, we are in Windows already. Put my password. And I'm in. 
standing behind my now functioning PC. I would like to thank everybody for watching this video and promise you much better videos also. Please subscribe to our channel, bash that like button if you like this video and share it.